Hello everyone, I am Monica Morani and with me is our beautiful guide, Um, and holding the camera is Lee Carroll. We have arrived back in Cairo. This is our last instalment of the Cryon Grand Egypt tour and the reason we're doing it is because we're going to have a little fun. But before we have fun, we want to just talk about Egyptian words, the ancient Egyptian words, and how we actually are mis- pronouncing them. For example, everyone says Tutankhamun. That is not the way you say the name. And so um, can you share with us how you would correctly pronounce that? Sure. Hello, everyone. First of all, the language they spoke is called ancient Egyptian language. Mm -hmm. But the way to write down the language, what we call now hieroglyphics, there's another way to write down the language, hierotic and demotic. Okay. And uh, the way we pronounce the names that they had in ancient time is not the way they used to pronounce them. Like now we say Tutankhamun, but the right way to pronounce the name in ancient language Tut Anchemun. Very different. Very, very different. Yes. It's even more beautiful when you say it that yeah. way, not Tutankhamun or King Tut, but you say Tut Anchemun which means the living image of Amun. The living image of Amun. And you don't get the king that. Of the gods. You don't get, you don't that, get when that when you, when you, you say just... Yeah. So, wow. We, we do that with many names. Like when we say Ramesses, it's Ra Mi Su. When we say Tut Moses, it's Juhuti Mes. We say Nefertiti or Nefertari, which like two different queens, by the way. It's Nefertari. It means the most beautiful one. <gasps> Nefertari. Exactly. Actually, this is how they used to, to pronounce it in ancient time. We used to feel each part of, uh, of the word, each sound coming out from their mouths like Nefertari. The beautiful one, or the most beautiful one. When you say Nefertiti, the little beautiful one. So nefer means beautiful. So nefer, you don't say just nefer, but nefer, it is beautiful. That is such a powerful learning for us because it brings a whole new landscape to what we discover in Egypt. For when sure. you, when you look at the vibration yeah, it would of take the sounds. time, like if you don't speak Arabic to pronounce it the way I pronounce it, mm -hmm. because I'm used to say it that way, like tu ta'anch amun. But uh, if you practice, you will you will be able to yeah. pronounce it that way. It's and you almost, will feel it, it is more beautiful. Almost like the language is musical. It is. Rather than a spoken word. It was like that, yeah. Yeah, uh, do you think that's also why many of the chambers have a resonance that just support sound? For sure. They designed the candles for them, like when they stand between the columns and when they say what is written on the columns, mm -hmm. like they sing what is written on the walls and the columns and that will make like echo uh. inside the temple. So it will be like natural music. They didn't need like music and instrument to do that sound of music. Uh -huh. So by the way they sang what is written on the wall, it will make like an echo inside the temple, so they used to sing what is uh -huh. written, not just saying what wow. is written on, on. Do you have a favorite phrase? Uh, the one I can share with everyone that we still use it nowadays, we have it always when you go inside any temple, mm -hmm. on the right and left side of any gate, uh, they always had Anch, Neb, Wasti. So they used to sing it. The translation for that, live the Lord of Upper and Lower Egypt. Oh, and nowadays beautiful. we say it, long live the king. Oh, wow. And that's the origins of that. That's the origin. How amazing, oh, how amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that You're with welcome. us. Now for the fun part for <laughs> all of the viewers. Um, is amazing at doing a cartouche is uh, what you see with as there's a circle around it and inside is normally the names of the kings, of the or, queens. kings or queens and it's called a cartouche and us tourists have fun where we write <laughs> our name Monica 
and they will do a cartouche with the symbols to represent the letters. So guess what I did? <laughs> Take a look at this. I had um, write crayon with the Egyptian hieroglyphs. And so it's really fun for us, but what's even more fun is that I'm um, said, well, now that I've written that, do you want me to tell you the meaning? of each of those letters. Absolutely, I wanted to him to share the meaning with me and I thought it was awesome. And so I'm asking him um, to now share the meaning of cryon with everyone else. Like uh, for hieroglyphics, the way to write down the ancient language, they have different like characters and signs and figures of animals, birds and reptiles and other things they used in their lives, like daily life objects, let's say it like that. And they used to write down as they pronounce the name, like the sound of it. We say cryon, so it's K-R-Y-O-N. And for the sound, K is a basket. Mm -hmm. And they usually made their ba baskets out of papyri. Mm -hmm. And papyri was like sacred flower for them oh. in the ancient time. And papyri, the reeds from papyri, they made paper. And by having paper, they wrote down the knowledge they had, some of the knowledge they had, not all the knowledge they had. And uh, by having papyrus, you feed your brain. So by having a basket, the sound K is a basket in your name, that means that you contain something sacred within your body, that you have knowledge within your body in a basket made out of papyri. That's amazing. And the second sound is R, which is mouth. Hmm. The sign for the R in ancient language is mouth and to have a mouth in your name that means that you know how to use careful, carefully your words coming mm -hmm. out from your mouth in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Some people just keep talking, talking and you get nothing from what they say. But to have a mouth in your name that means that you know exactly the words coming out from your mouth. Wow. And to make the sound... Uh, why you have not just one feather, two feathers. Mm. And the feather, maybe you know that already, was the symbol of justice because the goddess Maat, the way to identify here by having feather on her head. Mm -hmm. And by having two feathers, you are justful, you are um, uh, like feather, justice and truth. Justice and truth. Yes, so it is not like just a small thing to have in your name. You have two. Not, two not feathers, not just one. Not just one. Yeah. And um, the sound O, mm -hmm. they have it by showing baby chicken. <laughs> baby chicken! Baby I chicken. love that! We have baby chicken in Cryon's name. <laughs> <laughs> baby chicken, when you see baby, yes, it means innocence. Oh, yes. Purity. Purity. Innocence. Exactly. Innocence, purity. Yeah. So that's the meaning of the baby chicken. Oh, nice. And uh, the last uh, sound is N. Mm -hmm. And the sound N, they have the zigzag, which represents water. Mm -hmm. And water means... Life. Life. Everything. Yeah. Water is everything. It means as well, like... Uh, we use it for purification, or the ancient mm. Egyptians like that. The one thing that everyone had to do before going inside any temple was purification. purification. Even the king, his majesty, was not allowed to go inside before taking shower. And besides using oils and perfumes, but it was must to use mm. water. So water is everything. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well. I hope you all enjoyed hearing those incredible details of what cryon means using the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. It couldn't be more perfect. Yes. I think cryon is winking right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is our final video from our Egypt tour. We want to thank the Travel Keys Tour Agency. We want to thank our three beautiful guides. Um, who is with me. We also had Hesham and Omar joining us and the entire group that gathered with us are just the most beautiful souls that Lee and I have had the pleasure to experience. And so feel all of our love to all of you. We are sending you love and blessings from Egypt. 
Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.